How's it going today YouTube and welcome back to Shaner's Mechanic Life. Is your check engine light on and you got the code scanned and the code is something to do for your EVAP system? Well in this video I'm going to describe to you how a basic EVAP system works, what parts are involved, and I'm going to go through uh, some tr few trouble codes associated with it and some basic things you can look at yourself to hopefully fix the problem without having to take it into the shop. Well let's get into it. Here we go. Now the job of your EVAP system is quite simple. It's basically store the gasoline vapors so that you're not released to the atmosphere. And under the right circumstances, run those vapors back through and get burned through the engine. The way I like to remember it is basically the core of the system is the fuel tank. And pretty much everything branches off of that one way or another. You have your charcoal canister which is basically the storage system for the few, for the vapors. The vent solenoid, which allows atmospheric pressure to get to the proper levels and also to seal off the system. You have your fuel tank pressure sensor. And up here in your engine compartment, hooked up to the intake manifold, you got your purge valve. This one's kind of buried, but it'll look something like this. You have a line in, line out an electrical connector. So now I'll give you a brief description how all these work together, give you some common trouble codes and some things you can look at to help find the problem. So stay tuned to the end of the video. There's good information all the way through. So let's start by tracing the path of vapors from the fuel tank to the engine. So you've got gasoline and vapors in the tank. They have to be stored someplace. They are fed through lines to the charcoal canister. Inside here is activated charcoal, which will absorb gasoline vapors and store it. Now when conditions are right, the computer will open up the purge solenoid, which will allow the engine vacuum to draw the gasoline vapors out of the charcoal canister through the line it runs up to the engine compartment through your purge valve and into the engine. When the conditions are right, the computer will shut the solenoid, which stops the vacuum from drawing the vapors anymore. Now for the vacuum to draw the vapors out of the charcoal canister, you've got to have atmospheric pressure behind it, which is controlled by the vent solenoid. It is connected directly to the charcoal canister as well as the atmosphere through a line that generally will run up underneath the vehicle somewhere along the frame rail or like this one even to the fuel filler and inside here there's a mesh screen that helps control dirt from getting into the system so under most circumstances this whole system is sealed and close to the atmosphere, which keeps all the gasoline vapors from evaporating and getting into the atmosphere. Not really a whole lot involved with a system like this, but there are a lot of lines, a lot of connections, a lot of sources for leaks, which is generally the problem you run into with the EVAP system. So now let's get into the individual parts. I'll tell you what uh, trouble codes can be associated with them. In general, not always. Every manufacturer is different. Every system is slightly different as well. And also, some common things you can look for may be the cause of your check engine light. So let's start with a charcoal canister. Sometimes I've run into a, a trouble code like P0441 EVAP incorrect purge flow. In that particular vehicle, what uh, turned out to be the problem was the charcoal canister had been clogged up. That can happen if uh, you overfill your fuel tank chronically. You can actually get liquid gasoline into the charcoal, which doesn't do too well. It's designed to store vapors, not liquid. Now also, it can get clogged up with dirt, which comes in with your air from that line and the vent solenoid. 
codes I've run into with that can be P0448 EVAP system vent control and P0449 EVAP system vent valve solenoid circuit. Now what I've run into with these is generally dirt contamination but also you've got the electrical solenoid in the electrical end wiring computers could all be part of your problem but in general it would be a failure in the electrical side or dirt contamination because you've got the solenoid in there and if you get a whole bunch of dirt that solenoids not going to seat right and it's not going to seal off the atmosphere so here's an old vent solenoid and the problem that ran into that was the solenoid wasn't closing because full of dirt which came through this line to that mesh filter I was telling you about that line hooks up to that and that's that filter again dirt see this kind of problem a lot with the 4x4 crowd work trucks you know construction guys farmers stuff like that they're out in very dusty conditions nothing they can really do to prevent it short of uh, washing your vehicle regularly and making sure that dirt doesn't accumulate over there so find out where your filter is and make sure you keep it clean even pull it out and give it a rinse once in a while that stops all that dirt from getting in the line and wrecking your vent valve and now your purge valve just like the vent valve you've got electrical connectors you got wiring and you got computer control system but what you can check with your own eyes is just you know make sure your connections are tight they're on there and if you take the vent solenoid off or sorry the purge valve off take the line that comes from your charcoal canister on a clean piece of paper and tap it this is a brand new purge valve so nothing's coming out but if you tap it on some white paper and you see some black powder that's a sign that your charcoal canister is breaking down internally and it's drawing that particles up through the line and it could plug or prevent your purge valve from shutting now in my experience the most problem codes I've come across are leak codes you can get P0442 small leak or P0455 EVAP system large or gross leak quick check you can do first thing go to your fuel cap make sure your fuel caps on and tight this is a capless system also what you can do with this is where the nozzle goes in make sure that's clean and once you clean all the area blow it out even spray some WD-40 or something like that in and just kind of work that flapper and that WD-40 or penetrating oil will help clean the seal and hopefully stop a leak if it's coming from there now if you got a cap like this easy thing you can do take the cap off Make sure there's no damage around there, no built up dirt. And that orange O-ring. Take a look at that for any damage. Make sure it's clean and sealing nice. And what you can do is get a small screwdriver, pull that O-ring off, and you can even flip it around. That way you get kind of a, a fresh mating surface to seal up your filler neck. Now, if you got any questions about anything I've talked about, feel free to ask in the comments. So now you must be wondering, how does the system know if there's a leak? That again is also fairly straightforward. So what happens is, the computer sends a signal to your vent valve to shut that closes it off to atmospheric pressure next your computer commands the purge valve to open an engine vacuum 
sucks down the whole system under pressure, which is monitored by your fuel tank pressure sensor. Once that gets to a certain level, the computer shuts off the purge solenoid and seals that vacuum in. The computer then kind of starts its own timer and monitors the pressure in the tank. If that pressure drops too fast or too far, depending on the calibration, it'll set your codes. If it's a small leak, like I said earlier, the P0442, or if it's a large leak, it would be the P0455. So let's say you got a code P0455 for the large leak. Those are generally a little bit easier to find. Like I said earlier, check your fuel cap, your clamps on your filler neck, your filler neck itself, check all the hoses in the system, look for any kind of cracks, holes, broken connections, you know, stuff like that. Now your P0442 small leak codes are way harder to find, you know, or even the, the larger leak codes. Any one of these lines could be leaking, and anywhere in a line, any one of the fittings, any one of the connections, any one of the O-rings, sealing, you know, your fuel pump assembly, or even your filler neck, as well as any of the lines running all the way up from the fuel tank to the engine compartment. Your leak codes can also be caused by any one of these solenoids not seating all the way. Now if any part of your EVAP system fails, it can present itself in a number of different symptoms. Mainly your check engine light will come on, or you'll have a fuel smell outside the truck or even inside the cab. But if other pieces fail, it can become evident in other symptoms as well. Like if your purge solenoid fails and is stuck open, it could be hard starting because you're drawing raw fuel vapors into the intake. Or if your vent solenoid fails, sticks closed, something like that, it can make it hard to fill your fuel tank. Because as the gas goes in, that atmosphere on the inside has got to have some place to go out. You can have rough idle, poor engine performance, even your, your fuel economy can be affected. And even could be low power. Like if your fuel tank's not venting to the atmosphere, that fuel is getting drawn up to the engine and that tank's going to become under vacuum, which will make the fuel pump work extra hard to try to pull it out of the tank and send it to the engine. I hope this video helped you learn or understand the EVAP system a little bit better. And if you do have any of these codes and you can't seem to find the problem, then you might have to take it to a shop. But what they'll end up doing is they'll uh, hook up a smoke tester, which generally pressurizes the system a little bit of smoke. And wherever there's a leak, you'll see a trace of smoke coming up. That, and they'll have uh, scan tools that can actuate these solenoids and stuff and test them properly. But if you're able to fix it yourself with anything you learn in this video, by doing visual checks and some basic maintenance like cleaning filters and vents and stuff like that then you're definitely ahead of the game and you, you save yourself a trip to the dealer a shop and save yourself a bunch of money well let me know what you think of this video in the comment section if you like it throw me a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this hit the subscribe button and notification bell in the bottom right hand corner that way you get notified when we get new videos coming out well that's it for tonight everybody have a good night and keep wrenching